Call to order tonight's Committee of the Whole for the Auburn City Council meeting for March the 21st, 2023. The City Council should have the minutes from our Committee of the Whole meeting from March the 14th, just last week. Any additions or corrections to those minutes from the Committee of the Whole? If not, is there a move to approve? So moved. Move. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from March the 14th. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the minutes are carried forth. East Alabama Mental Health Board, Mayor Pro Tem Whitten. Yes, sir. I'm going to ask this body if they would um, consider um, postponing the appointments for these two vacancies and also reopen the application process um, so that we may seek additional applicants. And um, we can do that in the regular meeting. I can pull it off the consent agenda, but I just wanted to get consensus here that um, we pull it off, reopen it for advertisement so that we can have additional applicants um, for these two um, vacancies that are coming up. I had the opportunity to speak to the executive director of East Alabama Mental Health this morning, and um, they really are, are seeking some different criteria for um, their board members moving forward as they transition to different mm -hmm. things. And he asked um, and said it was acceptable for to have uh, a longer period of time. Okay. All right. So Mayor Pro Tem Witten is asking the City Council to please consider reopening um, the, the portal to allow more people to uh, fill out an application for the East Alabama Mental Health Board and postpone. Ms. Witten, when would you suggest that that postponing uh, go, go forward until there's time certain? Um, I would recommend um, just after our, my conversation with Ms. Edge to um, go to the second meeting in April, which is the 18th. April 18th. April 18th. Okay. Anyone on the council have a comment or a thought on that? I just got a question. Yes, ma'am. Oh, so you said for additional applic applicants, mm -hmm. how many apply? Um, we only had a couple, and I know we only have two applicants, um, two vacancies, but I think they just would like to see a, a, a wider pool Ooh, to, to possibly choose from. Okay. And consider. Okay. Any other questions? Good question, Ms. Taylor. Any other questions? So is the council okay with this? Allison, do we need to take a formal motion on this? Take I think a formal so. vote? Let, okay. Let's vote on okay. um, reopening the application period postpone. and then we'll postpone on, on the regular agenda. Okay. okay. Would that be one one motion? Uh, yes. Allison? Okay. Yes. Ms. Witten. So Ms. Witten has offered a motion to postpone till April eighteenth. Uh, the appointments to the East Alabama Mental Health Board, as well as reopening the application process. Correct? All right. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. All right. We have a motion to second. Any further comments or com thoughts? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries forth. All right. So to our community, we will reopen these applications uh, very soon, maybe hopefully this week. That'll, that'll get taken care of. And if you have an interest in serving on the East Alabama Mental Health Board, please go to the city's website, read about what the East Alabama Mental Health Board does, the kind of decisions they make, how often they meet. If that's a good fit for you and you're curious about it, please um, call and ask any questions, email us and ask any questions and fill out an application and we will consider your application later. Thank you, Ms. Witten. Uh, this item number four, voting on the Alabama League of Municipalities Annual Convention. I mentioned this um, at the last meeting. So I represent the City of Auburn on the board of the Alabama League of Municipalities. And the annual, they hold an annual convention for the state of Alabama. Uh, that convention is held the second week of May normally, and this year it's in Birmingham. And this would allow me to cast a vote um, as a board member for the future officers of the Alabama League of Municipalities and some board appointments, specific board appointments. Um, this is just a normal part of their process as they ask the city governments to approve the representatives that will be there casting those votes. So this is not a formal resolution or ordinance. This is really just a, uh, a verbal blessing, a nod of the head blessing from the city council that I can be the representative of Auburn at this convention. Any thoughts or questions from anybody here? Is everybody okay with that? I'll look to my left. Four nods, I'll look to my right. Got it. Four nods, okay. Miss Edge, I'll consider that an okay. All right, questions on the agenda for the finance director, Miss Allison Edge, who's doing a noble job replacing our city manager tonight who's to on do. vacation. <laughs> <laughs> any questions on the agenda for Miss Edge? All right, anything for us that we uh, need? Nothing just other than reminding that we'll need to pull the, the board appointments off the consent agenda. Okay. Mr. Right. Mayor, I have one, one question Please. or topic. 
we were fortunate enough to have a briefing from the police uh, uh, chief reference scooters downtown and on you know what what the rules are and how they're classified and we learned that they're classified the same as skateboards for the downtown business area but we never had any follow-up on that as far as what's going on with scooters throughout the rest of the community and I've had several uh, citizens contact me with safety concerns and I, I'm personally a big fan of, of personal uh, transportation and all that but I think that, uh, that we need to put some ground rules out there uh, what people should do if they're concerned about scooter safety or if they have incidents with them or whatnot. So I would ask that the uh, city council um, ask again for an update on where we stand in terms of scooters and the regulations, rules, definitions, signage, the whole, uh, just a lay down on where we stand with scooters in the community. So just to clarify, Mr. Griswold, you're, you're asking just for an education, just an update on where the city is, what are our policies, what are our rules and procedures right. for that. future community uh, okay. committee of the whole. Sure. I, I think that's a great idea. Is the city council okay with doing that during the committee of the whole during the month of April? Um, Ms. Edge, do you know if that would be a problem to do at our next meeting on April the 4th? Thumbs up from Will. Is that okay? I think, I think okay. we're good. Okay. So <laughs> we normally start those kind of things. Normally maybe 630, I mean 530 or 545 if it's information. Um, we'll figure that out, and I'll ask the community to be patient with us as we make a determination as to when we would start. Is that okay with you, Mr. Griswold? Absolutely. Okay, yes. good. Thank you. All right, good. Okay, so we'll do that on April 4th. Anything else from the council? All right, is there a move to adjourn? Okay. So move. All right, we'll adjourn the committee the whole. And since it is past 6 o'clock, we'll go ahead and open and welcome everybody to tonight's Auburn City Council meeting for March the 21st, 2023. Welcome everybody that is joining us here live tonight. Welcome those who are listening on WANI, as well as those who are watching on our different streaming services. We're glad to have you. Roll call, Lindsay. Adams. Here. Koblenz. Here. Dawson. Here. Griswold. Here. Mormon. Here. Parsons. Here. Taylor. Here. Witten. Here. Anders. Here. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> Tonight during the Committee of the Whole, uh, the City Council uh, approved a postponement of the East Alabama Mental Health Board appointments till April the 18th, and we'll also reopen the applications, and we continue to encourage our community to please um, take a look at that if you think that is an area that you'd like to serve your, your community through. City Council also gave the blessing for my representation uh, as a board member of the Alabama League of Municipalities to cast votes for officers and board members at the annual convention, which will be in Birmingham the second week in May. And then Councilman Griswold asked the City Council to, uh, to uh, provide and allow for an update on our current scooter policy here in the City of Auburn, and so we will do that at the next Committee of the Whole uh, on April the 4th, and we'll start that meeting a little bit early. Uh, please uh, pay attention to the time of that. Just a couple announcements from my standpoint. <clears throat> um, the Empty Bowls fundraiser is this, this coming weekend. Uh, it'll be held at Kiesel Park this year. This is a fundraiser for our outstanding uh, East Alabama Food Bank. Uh, our, you know, artists from around our community um, hand make bowls, and you can buy a bowl and then get a, uh, some soup while you're there, and there's different kinds of entertainment. It's a nice night. Hopefully the weather will be nice out at Kiesel Park, and it goes to a great cause. I want to remind everybody that Hazardous Waste Collection Day is this Saturday from 9 to 1. Please go to the city's website and read all the particulars about what you can bring uh, to our environmental services department. I want to go ahead and tell uh, Ms. Cook and all your people thank you for their hard work and their great attitudes that they <clears throat> normally bring to this event, and we're very grateful to have them. Um, we lost a couple of uh, citizens who have been very special to this city uh, recently. Mr. Mac Lazenby, who has recently served on our planning commission, 
uh, passed away last week, and uh, our thoughts and prayers out to Mr. Lazenby and his family, and thank him for all the great service he provided us through our planning commission. And then Ms. Carolyn Matthews, who was an honorable servant of our city, served on the city council for 10 years, served on our school board for 10 years, served a number of other uh, nonprofits in our area for a long time, also passed away recently. She was a tremendous citizen for this community and a real hero in Auburn. And I just want to um, say thank you to her and her family for allowing her to serve and thank her for her service. All right. Any other announcements or thoughts from the council? Yes, sir. Mr. Mormon. I, I just left the Irish dance at the library. <laughs> uh, brought a tear to me. I, uh, good job, Mr. Tyler. Mm. We, well done. Anyone else? That's hard to follow. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Auburn University Communications. <coughs> Sorry. He's Any getting over that last announcement. <laughs> how you doing, Friendly. Olivia? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Short report from me this week since you just saw me last week. Um, first things first, the big event is this Saturday. The big event is a one-day service event where hundreds of students will go out and spend the day giving back to the community as a thank you for letting us take over your city for 10 months out of the year. Um, so we're really looking forward to that and excited to see what, what all gets accomplished this weekend. And then another thing, we had two aerospace engineering students, uh, Cody Shelton and Megan Hayes, selected for the 2023 Summer Department of Defense Science, Mathematics, and Research for Transformation International Internship Cohort. Wow. Um, they were two of only 10 selected nationwide, and they will spend the summer doing research in Belgium. So that's obviously a huge deal and very prestigious, and we are proud that they are putting Auburn on the map internationally. I think that's all for me this week. As per usual, let me know if you need anything and continue supporting Auburn Athletics. War Eagle. Thank War you. War Eagle. We'll see you next week at breakfast. Uh, I failed to mention the big event. Um, uh, they invite me to come and, and speak to the students before they get started on Saturday morning. And uh, just thankful for our students and their enthusiasm. They, there's literally hundreds of different projects that they'll be attacking around our community uh, for, for individuals, for, for organizations. And uh, we're just very thankful for their enthusiasm and their willingness to give up a Saturday morning and go and do that uh, for all of our benefits. So thank you for that. All right, at this time, Citizens Communications on tonight's agenda. I will point you to uh, there are public hearings for a couple of items under resolutions uh, regarding a couple of uh, planning-related items. But if you'd like to speak to us about the other four or five things that are on our agenda tonight, now would be a time to come forward and address the City Council. Okay, seeing no one, we'll move ahead with city manager's communications. Uh, nothing under city manager's communications, so we'll move on right on to the consent agenda. Does anyone wish to remove an item from the consent agenda and deal with that item individually? Yes, I'd like to remove 8D as in David. Okay. 8D? <coughs> that would be Delta, right, Sonny? Right. Okay. Hi, David. All right. <laughs> anyone else? If yes. I may, could I remove 8 Charlie 2? There you go. Charlie and David would get along better than Delta and David. I mean, Delta and Charlie. All right. Anyone else? Okay. We'll go first to 8C2. Item 8C2 authorizes execution of a grant agreement with the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation through the Five Star and Urban Waters Restoration Grant. The grant amount is 45154 Move for approval. Second. second. I have a motion and a second. Mr. Mormon. I, I just think this is a laudable uh, opportunity that it needs just a few more words of praise. I think there's uh, 2,050 trees going to be planted and uh, a lot of opportunity for professional development, tours of the project, involvement by the Girl Scouts and the Auburn University Bee Lab. Just, just a whole lot of people are going to benefit from this, and I just wanted to recognize this as something kind of special. Totally agree. Any other comments or thoughts? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. All right. Now we'll go to 8D. Item 8D appoints two positions to the East of Alabama Mental Health Board for terms that begin April 1st, 2023 and end March 31st, 2029. I'd like to move to postpone the um, appointment of those two positions to the April 18th meeting as well as reopening the advertisement for the um, positions second all right 
We have a motion and second to postpone these appointments until April the 18th, as well as to reopen the applications. We have a motion and a second. Any other further comments or questions? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda? So moved. Second. Motion is second. Any other questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the consent agenda is approved. Okay. We have no ordinances this evening under resolutions. Item 10A is a traffic calming device request for Fairway Drive. This item was postponed from the March 14th, 2023 City Council meeting. And just a reminder that this item already has a motion and second, so the item is on the table. So this item is on the table, so the next step would be to begin discussion? Okay. All right. Any comments or questions? Um, and Mr. Koblenz, I know that you requested that this were, were to be postponed due to your absence uh, last week. Is there anything you'd like to add? Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Thank you uh, to my fellow council members for postponing this. I've, I've been working uh, with the applicant on this for uh, for a few months, and so we just uh, wanted to clarify a few things regarding the uh, traffic calming devices that will be going on Fairway. And Ms. Edge, I'll just ask these questions, and you can direct as, as needed. But as far as the design of the speed bumps or traffic calming devices, uh, and that's the proper term for them, what uh, what what would be the design, the intensity, I guess, of, of, that you would call uh, of these speed bumps uh, that are going on that street? And I will ask Allison Frazier, Engineering it, it, Services Director, that, to answer that question. Does that question make sense? I mean, as far as the, the how how big they will be, or to how you know the, the gradualness of them, that type of thing. Uh, so, so we use a standard uh, speed hump design, and okay. I don't remember the design speed. I want to say it's in the 15 mile per hour range okay. um but that's something that the public works department has a standard for but okay. it would mimic ones we've done recently like ashton park or um so you got winway winway okay yes we've replaced some of the old rubberized ones with concrete so it would be just like that okay i just had several concerns about the what i guess they call the bolt-ons you know the ones that rattle your your whole vehicle when you're out over them um i know we did a little traffic study there too on the fairway and um, the street that's coming in there—it's leaving me right now. But uh, Raymer Place, yes. uh, did, did, and I'm assuming that did not warrant a, a traffic uh, a sign there. That's correct. We did a stop warrant analysis for the Raymer Place and Fairway Drive intersection, and it did not meet the federal warranting criteria. Okay. So we'll, uh, as far as the number of speed bumps coming in there, is a total of four, I believe, coming through there. That's correct. Okay. And that's warranted by. And this is probably for my own knowledge, but is that the number of vehicles traveling through there, a certain speed that you're trying to achieve? So we mainly look at speeds. Okay. Um, the traffic common policy in our design manual outlines the criteria that we evaluate, but speeds is one of the larger ones as well as volume and the roadway classification. Okay. And from there, we determine if measures are warranted and what those measures are. Okay. All right, and the last, last question as far as signage is concerned, there were some questions around, I know the neighborhood has, uh, I think, a nicer sign than the standard signs the city puts up, and they understand the the uh, the signs that we would install would be the green post and the signage as far as any of the updates to that, they would be responsible for, the HOA would be responsible for any nicer post or whatever that would come with those signs is that correct that's correct we have a provision in our design guidelines for uh, hoas to install their own signs okay. with a, an executed hold harmless agreement which basically says they would maintain the signs in the event those signs are damaged and the hoa can't replace them we replace them in their stead until new signs are installed okay and do we supply any part of that sign like the sign itself the, or, or is the whole sign responsible uh, responsibility of the HOA? The whole sign is the responsibility of the HOA. Okay. Typically, they want to do a more decorative post. Sometimes they put the decorative borders around the signs, okay. and those are things that we don't provide. Okay. All right. I believe that's all my questions. I, I do want to – I've been working with the applicant uh, on this for, for a few months, and we – did a few things so I, I want to I'm, I'm not going to call her out because I don't want to embarrass her uh, publicly but she she did a lot of work as far as uh, walking the neighborhood and and um, and was concerned about the safety of, of our citizens in that neighborhood and I appreciate all the work that she put into that and uh, so just wanted to, to, to thank her for that and uh, that's all I have mr. mayor okay any other questions or comments from the council 
These are a lot of houses that she touched. Yeah, mm -hmm. she did. She, did <laughs> she got out and hustled. Okay. All right, any other comments, questions? All right. This is a resolution, so we'll do a voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <clears throat> and the motion carries. Item 10B1 is a request from Brett Basquin for conditional use approval for a performance residential use multi-unit development located at 152 Bragg Avenue in the Corridor Redevelopment District West Zoning District. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its March 16, 2023 meeting and a public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. A motion is second. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. And you do have five minutes to speak to the council. Okay. So no one will close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? I, I, I got a question on this sure. one. Because several people have called me about, are they, I guess it's a new development they're getting ready to put there. Or are they going to tear down the house that's, that's already there, right? Okay. Um, I think uh, pe most people want to know uh, the type of housing that's going up in that area. Mm. I was trying to find it on the, in my book here. But uh, is there... So, Ms. Edge, we do have a diagram here uh, of what it will be, uh, but there's no elevations as to what the house will look like at this point in time. And I know there's still some DRT approvals to go through. Um, I believe the applicant is here with us tonight. Did he I is. think I yeah. saw him? He yeah, is. he's here. Um, would it be appropriate for him to come forward and yeah, maybe absolutely. answer that question? Yeah. Um, we can ask Mr. Basquin to come yeah, forward. Yeah, Mr. Basquin, could you? Before he before he answer that question, sure. I wanted to ask another question. Yeah, sorry, jump okay, ahead. Okay, so at yep. the, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I also want to know at the planning com um, meeting, was there any uh, comments? Uh, comments or anybody disapproved it or wasn't satisfied with the development or anything? It, it was approved unanimously, and there there were no public comments. There was no public. Okay. The only public comment was the adjacent neighbor who supported it. The adjacent property owner supported it. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Basquin, you yeah, so get the, the general feel of her question there. Yeah. So, the 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 development is a mixed use development. So, there'll be first floor commercial and then residential above. Um, what's before you tonight is the conditional use for the residential component. You could rebuild it and just do commercial there uh, by right, but the residential component is what requires that. So, um, it'll be a um, first floor re uh, commercial with uh, two to three stories of residential units above it. Um, those residential units will have to meet the city's designation of, um, of market rate, um, you know, market rate housing. It couldn't be a student product or a student oriented design. The city has guidelines that prohibit that in that particular zoning ordinance. So um, th that's, that's what it's set up for. Um, the current intent is first floor commercial, second story would be two units, and then the third and fourth story would be two units. It would just be a two-story unit in interior. So the third and fourth, you would have a, a unit on the third, and you would be able to go through your internal staircase to the you know the the fourth level, which would be the second story of that of that unit. So that that's what they're playing for uh, right now. Okay. okay. Is it good? Huh? Yeah, yeah, this is good. I did, you, people were asking me, so I just wanted to ask the question. Oh, uh huh. That, sure. That, if you if you come in, is is that closer? Is that development? Is it closer to the uh, um, College Street? Is, yeah. So it's uh, it's east of Sanders, okay. right? So okay. there's a vacant lot at the corner of Sanders, and it's the next one over. It's two units west of Auburn Electric. Okay. If you know where Auburn Electric mm -hmm. is, right there. Yeah. Actually, so, I live around in that place. <laughs> you mind staying there yeah. just for a second? All right, Mr. Griswold. Yeah, I'm sorry. You said so commercial on the first floor, and then how many additional stories above it? Is it uh, three. Three, so a total of four stories. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess the, the ceiling height on a commercial property is, is higher than a residential, so you're good getting all that in 45 feet? Yeah, you can. Yep. Yep, okay. Yeah. And it's not going to be... 
uh, rendered by the bedroom ADDU type it, it thing? It can be. Can be. Can okay. Be. Good. Thank you. Not no problem. Yes, sir. Um, so you'll have 12, you think, uh, beds, I guess? Um, it, it runs, it determines the number of parking places. Correct, that, correct, yeah, we just... And I think there'll be 22, 23 parking places, so plenty of room to park there. I was just wondering, I guess those things don't have to be ironed out tonight. It, it, all we're ironing out is that it's going to be residential and commercial, so... Yeah. But is this going to be an ADDU? No, by definition, uh -huh. an ADDU is an academic detached right. dwelling unit. Right. So an ADDU is essentially a single family house being used for uh, right. stu student room. It, it, the proper term would be more of private dormitory because if we have more than two units and it's being student, purpose built student housing, it would be private dormitory, but that's prohibited in the zoning and that would be worked out when we when plans are submitted on the allowable floor plans that would be allowed. But when you do that, right, the the, res, the commercial component's totally separate out of that. It's not factored into the residential, um, you know what I mean? There's no overlap in regards to being able to use the commercial for um, purposes of calculating residential requirements or anything like that. You know, the only thing that we're talking about here is, is enough parking to support either the number of beds and the square footage of the commercial that's being proposed. What is your target audience on this? Is it buyers or renters or families or professionals uh, or? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the ultimate goal would be the, the first floor, um, one of the owners has an actual business he's trying to move into that um, uh, for one of the commercial pods. On the other one, um, you know, it's probably condoed out is probably what they're looking to, to do it. There's a demand for housing that close, um, you know, uh, especially within the core right there, that close, mm -hmm. walkable and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, I, I think the intent would be to condo it out and sell the, the, the units. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions for Mr. Bassman? All right. Thank you, man. Any questions for or comments, questions for other staff? I, I have one more. Um, our zoning is complex, and so I'm trying to get my, hand, my head around it, but um, you don't have any concerns about whether or not this can be built on that particular piece of property. Do you? No, it's, no. It's, uh, you know, they'll have to submit <coughs> plans and things, and that's part of the conditions that the planning uh, staff placed on the, uh, the approval and recommendation from the planning commission. And so part of that is for submitting the architectural plans, the, the floor plans, and so forth. And, but as far as the, the housing requirements go, they'll have to meet that. You mentioned parking. They'll have to meet those criteria um, before we approve the plans to move forward from DRT to construction. Yeah, because tonight we don't know if it's two floors of residential or three floors of residential. If if it's two floors, uh, I think Mr. Bascom mentioned that there would be a staircase from one floor to the next, but then the third floor would look different, I guess, the third residential floor. Yes, sir. So um, that's something that is decided on later by... Uh, Correct. By a review pro, uh, plan. Correct. All right. Any other questions? Yeah, I, sure. Yes, I'm sorry. One more question. Okay. Um, so is there going to have to be some zoning variances awarded or granted in order to accomplish all this? No? Okay. The planning Commission did a, approve a waiver for um, side, side yard, side buffer yard. Okay. That was approved. Does that have, it does not have to go to the board of zoning adjustment, also, or no, sir. That's a, that's that's within the planning commission's right to waive. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Yep. Okay. All right. We got a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. 
Item 10B2 is a request from Sharon Talbert on behalf of the Housing Authority of the City of Auburn for a conditional use approval for institutional community housing services and daycare and office uses at 945 North Donahue Drive in the Redevelopment District Zoning District. A previous request was approved by the City Council on March 16, 2021 and has expired. A public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. This time I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. You'll have five minutes. <clears throat> Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? Uh, well, I got, I got a couple of yes, ma'am uh, comments. I am so glad to see this on the agenda tonight. And I think uh, Ms. Torbert has worked really hard to get this development done. And I think that uh, I, I was hoping she would be here tonight so that uh, I just wanted to thank her for just all the hard work that she done put into this development. And I know that the community would be happy to see um, it happen. And when I look back at some of the pictures and some of the uh, pictures that she's in the, in the drawings and stuff, and it just it almost made me feel just as good as Getting buckets? <laughs> no. <laughs> so this is this is just awesome, and I just want to thank Sharon for just working so hard and, and just sticking with this. And I know everybody's just gonna be so happy, and it's gonna make when you come into on onto uh, Donahue, it's gonna make a, a it's it's just gonna make it look just beautiful. And so uh, if if anybody see her, just congratulate her and just tell her that we, we are just happy to have that on the northwest side of Auburn yeah. at this new development. I don't know which one of these housing she's going to choose, but either one of them, they look good. They all look good. <laughs> you know, Connie, I couldn't agree with you more. This has been Ridgecrest, has been part of our community since 1971, and it's basically looked the same since mm -hmm. 1971. And to have this fresh, modern look, I'm just, I'm really excited for the residents um, and just how happy it's going to be for them. What a great moment it's going to be for them to move into these homes. Uh, not only is 106 units going to be replaced, but they're going to add 70 units for senior citizens mm -hmm. as well. Um, Allison, I was going to get maybe somebody from the staff to speak to the fact that um, there's going to be we're going to privatize some of the streets internally within the development, and that's going to allow the setbacks to to be different than we would normally allow is could somebody just mention that real quick that's in our our notes here Allison, for Allison. Yeah. yes one of the things we've worked with Sharon on is the vacation of um, Booker Pride and Julie if you remember the council vacated Crosby some time ago and so this would vacate the remainder of those streets to allow the setbacks and the development to be more in line with what the housing authority would like so you'll see the vacations maybe in another couple of months. Okay, good. Well, very exciting. I, I totally agree with Ms. Taylor. It's going to be great for our community. Now, do you, do you have any date as to when this is probably going to start, or am I jumping too fast? I just don't want to die and not see it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I will, Sharon was not able to be here tonight, but there are some representatives, Brett, and, okay. and also from the Michaels organization. Yeah, so, so right now, uh, the project's got to go through and get funding um, through the tax credit process. Uh, that funding cycle is, is usually once a year through the, through the state. And so um, we're, we're in that cycle and have to get everything prepared for, uh, for that submittal. But Tracy, she's one of the architects on the team, and I'll let her kind of address a little bit more. Okay. Um, so with affordable housing, we have to submit tax credit applications for each phase. There's three phases. You can only do one tax credit application a year. So we're going to do the first phase this year. Uh, we're hoping that that will be fully occupied in 2025. Um, so if we, um, you know, get to submit another tax credit application each additional year, um, you could see it completely complete in 2027 but we have to make sure that we get that tax credit application awarded. Um, and that's why we're here. Uh, we were here before and we're here now because we need to get that award. Okay. You get extra points if you communicate that you have a city council representative that wants them to hurry up. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. 
Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your work. As far exciting. as the funding is concerned, is that a, is it a HUD type mm -hmm. funding project or is it a uh, how is that funded exactly? Yes. Good evening. I'm the developer for the project with the Michaels organization. And yes, we will be using low income housing tax credits. Okay. And the, and as far as when the construction's go in place, the plan for the residents, I guess there's a plan in place for displacing them during that time, I guess. Correct. Yes, we have engaged a relocation consultant, and so she will work with the residents for several months in advance of great breaking ground <coughs> to ensure we find adequate housing for them. So this is a three-year project overall, probably? Uh, it's a uh, total well, of for the first phase, we intend to... Um, we intend to start immediately after getting financing um, for that, but um, the construction process would probably take about 12 to 15 months. Okay, thank you. Thank you for answering those questions. All right, any other comments or questions? Yes, I, I have a question. Sure. You said we're gonna vacate Pride, um, Pride Avenue. That's only the part within the, the Ridgecrest. It's not gonna be the other side of the Donahue, is it? Or? Correct, it's the west, okay. west side so of So the, Pride from the Donahue. other. Remaining portion of Pride still uh, remains under city control. Yes, that's okay. correct. Thank you. Sure. <coughs> Mr. Moore? I, I do have one question. I don't know who to direct my question to, but um, there are two or three campuses, I think, uh, total. Uh, there's Ridgecrest, and then there's Moton Apartments, and then on Dean Road. And Andrew, I'm just, pardon? And Drake Apartments. Okay. Oh, well, Foster. I, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. I was just hoping on hope that there was some spillover from this project to eventually get to the Dean Road um, housing. Holding out for that. We have a we have a burned out facility there, and I'm hoping there's a good reason that there that is. hasn't been uh, repaired or replaced or something. So I'm hoping that one day downstream here that. These, um, these drawings are amazing. They are amazing. And Do we have I'd anybody here to, that could speak to the future plans of the Housing Authority? Okay, we'll, we'll try to maybe ask for that information as to that. what the, some of the future plans might be with some of the, the other facilities as well. Well, I can't, I can't add a little bit to that because actually Sharon had a, um, she spoke at a community meeting that I had, and she talked a little bit about this. And Ridgecrest is, was the uh, first apartment complex that she was starting with. Now, I think from Ridgecrest, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think she's going to Drake and then to East Park. But uh, it's in her, it's on her agenda to um, reconstruct all the housing authority apartments. So that, that, that's one, you know, everything take time, and I just think that she just, uh, I, you know, I, I'm just so blessed right now and just so full um, just for her to just take the time out from long, I, I'm a prodigy of Ridgecrest. So it, just just knowing that it's going to happen, Ridgecrest is not the oldest apartment. I think East Park is, maybe a, a modern one of those is old, uh, older than Ridgecrest. And uh, because I moved in Ridgecrest when we in 71. So, um, but, and, and, and I'm thinking, and I, I guess she probably would be the one to answer the question as to after Ridgecrest, then, then, you know, what's the next development? And, you know, maybe we can talk to her if, if you feel the need that it needs to go to um, East Park instead of one of the others first. So we'll reach out. We'll reach out to yeah. and see what we can. We'll yeah. do that. All right. Okay. Anything else from the council? All right. We have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And that motion carries. Thank and you. those are all of the items we have on the agenda. Okay. This time we'll open it up for Citizens Open Forum. This is your opportunity to address the city council about anything that will be that's on your mind. You have three minutes, and we ask that you address your comments straight to the city council. Please give us your name and address for the record. Yes. Councilman Taylor, I don't think you'll be dying anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> I you hope look, not. <laughs> you look too good in your outfit. So. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my name is Robert Wilkins, 261 Denson Drive, Auburn. Um, this Auburn City Council seems to be wakening up. Um, you, the council, is beginning to understand that one vote has tremendous responsibility given to you by your constituents. 
uh, to make informed decisions. Um, Ordinance 3413, business license revocation, proved your determination. Super thanks. Um, now I want to talk about tools and the bureaucratic toolbox. The mayor and city uh, manager, they love toolboxes. So um, in 1999, the Auburn City Council created the uh, grandfather of all bureaucratic tools. It was Ordinance 1883, known as the Home Occupancy Ordinance. Two or more persons residing in a single dwelling unit where all members are related by blood, marriage, adoptions, guardianship, plus one related one unrelated person in the LD district, the NC district, the DD, uh, DDH district. Are you kidding me? Is this Germany? Is this the Auburn Gestapo asking for papers or dragging us out? The Auburn Council in 2021 continued this discriminatory ordinance by passing Ordinance 3288, short-term rental. Definition of discrimination by Cambridge Dictionary. The treatment of a person or a particular group of people differently in a way that's worse than the people are treated usually. Most students are not paying, are not partying, they're studying, doing part-time work and concentrating on their grades and getting a degree from Auburn University. I did the same when I was at Auburn. The 1999 Auburn City Council decided it was fine to discriminate against former Auburn alumnus and others to stop them from purchasing a house to have their kids and friends in a safe and quiet environment. Why was this done? Likely to support the real estate developer in getting richer and providing housing to the Auburn students. But I was told by Councilman Parsons and by Councilman Griswolds, two strong supporters of Ordinance 3288, I could sell my home or buy a home in the following districts where there's no discriminatory practices. Last year, we got 816 signatures in eight days were against the Ordinance 3288. Six were for the Ordinance. That's seven one hundredth of a percent. Who decided to amend and incorporate the Ordinance 1883 uh, into the new Ordinance 13, 3288 short-term rental? The mayor, the city manager, the city bureaucrats, the elites, maybe the hotels. Who knows? Next council meeting, writing a wrong. Thank you. Who will be next? Good evening. My name is William Fowler. I live at 1425 Cloverbrook. Oh, it's actually resides in his ward, Chiefs. It's uh, about the Buckies and that big old, I know they're about to be done and we're so happy, yay. It's actually that road between, between six, Ward 6 and 8. It's the... Uh, is that veteran boulevard? Are they gonna? I was wondering, are they gonna put like a little <coughs> tiny connecting road? Like, uh, I know they try to. They have the traffic light, but like, are they gonna build like a little side road? Like, I hate to, how, like from veterans to like a little like stripped onto the Bucky's property because if that is, I was just wondering like, why would you put a traffic light right there if you have people literally gonna turn right and take two hundred. Two, literally a hundred yards and just turn right back into veteran and turn into <coughs> back into our business now. I'm just wondering if they're going to build another road because I drive through there and I'm just wondering if they're going to build a side road. And We'll look to get you that answer. If we can provide that for you at the end of the meeting, we'll do that. How about yes, that? Thank you. I will tell you I have a lot of confidence that a lot of smart traffic engineers have been evaluating that whole intersection <laughs> and I trust that the kind of decisions they've made, but we'll see if we can get you an answer here in just a minute. Yes, sir. Okay. Yep. Thank you. <laughs> Who'll be next? Mayor Anders, ladies and gentlemen of the council, Herbert Walter Dibar Jr., 412 Opelika Road, Apartment 111. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Griswold for bringing up the scooter situation, being part of the Tumor sit-in group. We notice a lot of scooters doing scooting along downtown. So we thank you for that. Um, I understand that you're lobbying the Alabama legislature this session. I was wondering if that lobbying includes anything lobbying for funding for hospital-based violence intervention, primarily helping East Alabama Health 
and any involvement Auburn University would have in the public health based on its curriculum, practice, um, academics, so on and so forth. Um, the uh, organization I'm involved in, one of the Moms Demand Action, both the local group and the Alabama chapter, is working with Faith in Action Alabama for such funding for certain centers they call level one trauma centers based on what is defined by the American College of Surgeons or Alabama Public Health Department or whomever. And they're focusing on Birmingham, Mobile, and Huntsville. Based on my understanding, I don't know if there's any discussion about including East Alabama Health in it. So I'm just wondering, as far as the city lobbying is concerned, has this issue been raised, even been raised? And if you can even um, mention it publicly without uh, giving away any confidence. And oh, by the way, give Miss Mrs. Tolbert my congratulations too. And I'd also, <coughs> if you could congratulate Miss Plankenship for the work she's doing with the Citizens Academy. It's starting over again. I had a chance to be one of the receptionists, if you will, for their opening just recently. You're an alum. That's right. I'm an alum. I'm an alum of the first graduating class. Mm -hmm. Thank y'all very much. Thank you for that question. Um, I, in fact, was in Montgomery today, but we'll, Miss Edge, if we could maybe have somebody from the staff maybe provide him a, a summary of some of the things we're, we're looking at and evaluating right now that are okay. potentially being talked about in Montgomery. That'd we be great. That. All right. Be next. Yes, ma'am. Karen Herring, 311 Butternut Drive. Four years ago, I submitted as the objective in my library board member application to be a part of helping the library provide exceptional <coughs> services for our community as it continues to meet the demands of our growing city. Thank you for appointing me to serve. It has truly been an honor. <coughs> As I submitted my application to serve another term, I thought about how to revise that response for my objective. I found that I only needed to add the word continue. <clears throat> I began serving on the board in 2019 PP, you know, that pre-pandemic era that we all once loved. The board's first major task was creating the fiscal year 21-24 strategic plan a six-month strategic planning initiative that included extensive, <coughs> excuse me, ex extensive community engagement and research. Through this process, we learned that residents wanted additional branch locations, meeting and study spaces, expanded collections, and increased program offerings relevant and appealing to a diverse population, to quote. Survey respondents most frequently called for additions to the collection more materials, varied formats, and greater diversity in both content and audience appeal. Mm -hmm. The board has advised, encouraged, and celebrated the library staff's actions and initiatives to address the challenges and gaps revealed in the strate strategic plan. Not only has there been <clears throat> astounding growth in all areas of the library, including the new Boykin satellite space, but there have also been metrics created to monitor and update progress on these library initiatives that is easily accessible to the community. During my tenure, the library has adopted a systematic process of consistent review of board bylaws and policies, leading to a more inclusive language in our borrower, policy, borrower privileges and responsibilities policies, a more comprehensive collection plan management plan, and more patron-friendly wording in the unintended children policy. As a board, we've also worked to increase public awareness of APL's endorsement of the American Library Association's Library Bill of Rights and the Freedom to Read Act statement. Sorry. While we've seen so much progress over these past mm -hmm. four years, I want to make clear that the library staff deserves all the credit. Never have I worked with such a dedicated and talented staff who cares so very much for the service that they provide and the community members that they serve. My sincere hope is to have the opportunity to continue to serve on the library board. I trust that this body will also give thoughtful consideration to appointing other board members that reflect Auburn's diverse community. We would be especially grateful to serve with a member from the Northwest Auburn community where the first library branch is planned. 
May we all work together to improve and increase services for our growing diverse community. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for your service. Who will be next? Hello, Martha Champ, 307 Camellia Drive. The library is no longer a safe place for children. The books have flooded the shelves of the children's wing. It's all about sex, sex, and more sex for children. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. The, the person before us here is describing the library in an inappropriate way. It's not a factual way that, that you're describing the content of this library at all. I have used all these books. All of the books. In, they're, they're all, as you say. Is that, is that, your claim is that they're all sex, sex, sex. I have checked out more than 100 books in the last two months, and they are about gender, sexuality, bisexuality, trans sex, this, that, and the other. No, not every book in the children's Thank wing. You. Please continue, Ms. Shamp. Uh, yes, yeah, sex for children. How inappropriate. It's a form of child abuse. The librarians seek to normalize sexual activity to children, grooming them, grooming them. Point of order, Mr. Mayor. Please. That, that's an inflammatory statement. I think Gro it's the grooming truth. Grooming is just beyond, beyond acceptable. They are grooming the children for promiscuity and perversion. Does a five, six-year-old, seven-year-old need to know about transgender, bisexuality, five, six, and seven-year-olds, lesbian, queer, intersex? No child needs this. The library has become a danger zone for Americans who still cherish... Point water, Mr. Mayor. Our library is not dangerous at all. It is morally dangerous, especially to children. Who still and Americans who still cherish virtue, purity, chastity, and the honorable estate of marriage, which our Lord says is one man, one woman, and offspring, and they are the majority, certainly in this city. But the library is sexualizing children, trying to corrupt the morals of minors, and receive a paycheck from us. A Point of order, Mr. Mayor. The statements that this. Uh person before us is uh, claiming is just false. Every word is true. The Lord Jesus Christ, author of all mercy and truth, said this, anyone who causes one of these little ones who believe in me to fall into sin, it would be better for him to have a large millstone tied around his neck and be drowned in the depth of the sea. Matthew 18, 6. Jesus Christ does not lie. Thank you. Who will be next? Please. I'm Sue Ann Balch, and I've lived in Auburn since I was in the third grade, which tells you how old I am. It was 1965 when I moved here. Raised my daughter in the Auburn City Schools. Uh, I've experienced being a single parent. I've always loved the library. It, was, it meant so much to me growing up. I would walk to the old downtown library from where I lived near the current library, and I would, it would be my goal. I had a friend that I raced to see. How many books could we read? You know, so the library played a significant role in my learning, definitely. When I got older, I moved on to the university library. I'd have faculty in the history department that would get mad at me because I'd have a whole bunch of books checked out that they needed for their graduate students. Okay? I was a student, I said this at the library board the other day, about a month ago. I was a kid that when I grew up... Uh, I was what we would call a tomboy in those days. I liked to throw pine, have pine cone wars with the gullages and the north cuts in my neighborhood and my brother. 
and I like shooting BB guns and hunting for like chipmunks or squirrels or whatever little kids could shoot at back in those days. Um, in today's world, someone would have tried to transition me. By the time I got to be in puberty, I realized it wasn't football I liked so much, but it was football players. So I have a personal investment in not wanting to see little children be subjected to this kind of influence at an innocent age. Let children be children. I've also worked as a guardian ad litem. I'm an attorney. I used to be Judge Lane's law clerk for three years. I then was the director of international programs over here at Auburn, brought in people from 97 countries and every religion in the world, or no religion at all. And so I have a very diverse work background. I have friends from all over the world. We have a big Muslim community in, in this town. They would be just not, it's not just Christians or Jewish people that are Orthodox that would be opposed to some of the things I've seen in this library. And I'm not talking about adults. I am not for book burning or I am definitely a First Amendment proponent. I'm not for censorship, but I am for the protection of little kids. And when I've worked as a guardian ad litem, some of the stuff I see would have been considered pornography and children being exposed to pornography. And I have filed a complaint with the Auburn Police Department to have this investigated because I'm not a judge and I'm not a pornography specialist. But I think we, need, we have hit the point with the books in this library that we need a judge to decide if this is pornography or not. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Balch, can we have your address for the sure. record? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, good. 2231 Spring Hill Drive. Thank you. Auburn. Anyone else? Please. Good evening again. My name is Marcia Businger. I res reside at uh, 254 Hedgerow Circle in Auburn, and I'm currently the chair of the Auburn Public Library Advisory Board. I'm glad to see you all again, and I'd like to thank um, Councillor Mormon for coming to our board meeting today, and also I was with you at the Irish Dance Program. Quite um, a great event. We had a wonderful time watching children dance. Um, since, since I spoke to the council last month, I know you've been made aware that in the last six months, I'm sorry, six weeks to two months, the library's received over 70 letters of support from um, members of your community, your constituents, in support of the library and its collections. And um, because they are voicing their very deep concerns about the efforts by an individual or a small group of individuals to re remove library materials of any kind, but particularly LBGTQIA plus materials from the collections, and thereby restricting the reading choices of everyone else in the Auburn community. I'd just like to once again read you several excerpts as I have time from some of your constituents. The first one said, I was distressed to learn that someone is trying to get LBGQ QTIA materials removed from the Auburn Public Library. I would be distressed to learn that someone wanted any materials removed from the public library. I depend on my public library to purchase materials with an unprejudiced eye and then make them available to me so that I can make my own decisions about topics that concern me. The librarians at Auburn Public Library have not been hired to be my moral conscience keepers or my health overseers or my intellectual developers. They have been trained to select, organize, and present reliable information sources. The second one said, the idea of any one individual assuming the right to ban reading choices for all others is abhorrent. Every parent has the right and responsibility to monitor their own children's readings, but only their own. Small-minded people are free to avoid buying and reading any books they disagree with, but they violate the rights of all others by attempting to block freedom of reading choice, which is essentially denying freedom of speech. I have several others, but I'm going to run out of time. I would just like to say and remind the council that any person who wishes to remove a book from the collection is indeed engaging in censorship. And the library um, has pledged to not censor to support the ALA Freedom to Read Act and the um, Library Bill of Rights. Thank you very much. 
Who will be next? Please. Hello. Thank you for your time. My name is Patrice Daniel. 532 Gray Oak Circle, 36830. I wasn't expecting to come here as a citizen, but I would like to request the council grant some time for people who do object to some of the sexually explicit material available to children. I ask this for the reason because sexual development is a long and complicated and sensitive subject. It takes time. Parents have the right to form their children morally. I have carefully gone through, and I don't have time to address in three minutes. I would like to take the time and ask if we can address this further and gather more material. I would love to have someone on human trafficking tell you the harm that pornography does to children. I would like you to know from a qualified expert how this informs their psyche. This is not an attack on LGBTQ. I'm talking about children, letting them be children, letting their parents help them adjust in this world, as is their right and their love and their concern. If children are at risk and being harmed, I know and would advocate for qualified medical professionals to assist or provide a safe environment. We certainly have that with CASA, with sexually abused children. And this is, I can't think of a better opportunity for a predator. And if you think that this is all sunshine milk and oatmeal cookies, I think there's something wrong. And if you think that this is appropriate, and I'd be happy to submit it to you, because I was given this, and I can't believe this is just right on our shelves. I've gone through all of your bylaws, and they exempt themselves from any kind of responsibility and put it on the parent. And they say that I'm wrong because I really don't want this without proper supervision from a caring adult for a child. I wouldn't want my grandchildren near this. And my neighbor, who's a psychiatrist, who I think will ask, she'll talk to you about the constant sexual abuse. And it comes from politicians. It comes from neighborhoods. It comes from possibly people on the school board. And I guess with the LGBTQ, I think the proper term is minor attractive person. Please wrap it up. So I ask you to please provide ample opportunity because this is a genuine area of concern. Thank you. Who will be next? Okay, we'll close this time. Um, Ms. Edge, can we go back to uh, the question regarding um, the roads out at Bucky's, and if there's any update, um, could Ms. Frazier just kind of talk to us about the, what the gentleman's question was with the... Yes, the other Allison can do that. <laughs> Not this one. Stand his question. Please. He was asking if I think Bucky's Boulevard and Corporate Parkway are going to connect. They are directly aligned. Veterans Boulevard, which is the road that goes through Tech Park North, extends from Cox to College Street, but there are no other intervening streets that are proposed. I'm not sure if that answers all your questions. If, if not, certainly let us know and we can try to get you some further answers, okay? All right. Um, Allison, obviously we've had a lot of pretty heavy comments tonight, allegations. Um, I would, if, if the city attorney's available right now, if he could, if he could speak to some of these um, statements that have been made this evening related to our library. Thank you, Mayor. 
As this council is aware, when uh, the city council created the Auburn Public Library, it vested the library board with the authority to manage the collection of the library. Uh, that has been accomplished through not only the library board themselves, but through employees of the city, including the library director, Tyler Witten, who is with us tonight. If any citizen of the city of Auburn uh, who has a library card believes that there is any inappropriate material within the library, there is an established policy and procedure by which that person can request review of the material within the collection. That is a process that has been in place for many, many years. That is a policy and procedure that is followed to this day. Uh, some of the uh, speakers here tonight have utilized that policy, have requested review of materials within the library. The library management team uh, has worked to review those materials uh, per their policy, uh, which is available online. Um, and frequently, uh, uh, reviews those requests uh, with a very keen eye toward what is appropriate not only for the general public but what is appropriate uh, for the particular ages within their varied collections. There is a lot of responsibility placed on uh, our community in utilizing the community resources made available through the Public Library Service including parental controls, which are available. Not only are parents encouraged to bring their children to the library to help them navigate the collections, to help them find materials that are appropriate to them, but there are also parental controls available for library cards of underage patrons of the library that per parents are able to set through library policy, which is established and available. Uh, and um, let me assure the council that uh, the library board and the library staff are very keenly aware of what constitutes obscene materials within the statutes laid out by our state legislature. They're very keenly aware of what constitutes child pornography as set out by our state legislature. Those materials uh, do not exist within our library. To the extent that any patron disagrees with the classification of materials within those confines, uh, we at the city attorney's office certainly would uh, ask them to avail themselves of the policies that have been put in place and the procedures that are working to review those materials for their appropriateness. Any questions from the council yeah. about these particular issues? Well, I just wanted to say that I do appreciate the last two speakers who came and had a measured argument uh, with regard to library content. I don't think it's, uh, I have no interest in listening to hyperbole uh, and exaggerations from the first speaker. So to my fellow council members, I apologize if I uh, stepped on the comments, but I found them to be totally outrageous and inappropriate, uh, uh, unnecessarily demonizing members of our community. So <clears throat> to my fellow council members and Mr. Mayor, if my remarks were a little hasty, well, my apologies, but I'm, I'm not going to tolerate that kind of uh, descriptors. Uh, and perhaps in the future, if somebody wishes to do that, I shall just remove myself. Any questions for the city attorney related to what he, the comments he just made? Uh, just a question for you, Mr. Mayor. Do you think that we could dedicate time to, to examine this, this material and this issue with the city attorney and with the whole council? I'm not sure I'm prepared to answer that question tonight without the city manager here and without previously okay. talking to the city attorney's office, but why don't we take that under consideration and answer back to you. I do think it's something we need to do. I, I, I personally want to know, I want to get to the bottom of this and know what's actually going on. I hear one, some people saying it doesn't exist and some people saying it does. If, if sexually explicit material is over there where a kid can just walk up to it and take it, I don't care whether it's LGBTQ or whatever, that's not right. 
So I think we do definitely need to look into that. And as far as the lady exaggerating, this is America, and she has a right to say what she wants to say. No matter what side you're for, you got a right to say what you want to say. And I've told all of you this. I tell you to the day I die, I will defend anybody's right to have their position, whether I agree with it or not. So let me make that very clear. I can't go home and sleep tonight if I don't make this clear. I believe in doing what's fair, what's right, but you can't beat one side because you don't agree with it. You got to sit there and listen to it, and take it and move on. But I, I think the city turns head in the right direction. But I, I personally want to know if if a child can walk up and grab some of this stuff that's, that's, that appears to be pornographic. Uh, so I, I think you know it's easy to sit back as a council and say, well, it's going to go away. We don't want to make nobody mad. But I'm not trying to make anybody mad. I want to do what's right for our children that's got to grow up in this in this community. They face enough hard heartache in the, in the future, I feel like, as it is. And if, if we, I don't want us to contribute to it as the city of Auburn, and, I'm, and whether you agree with it or not, she has a right to her three minutes uninterrupted. Paul, well, if I may, um, to the question of what is available in our library and, um, and the accessibility of it, <clears throat> it's my understanding that the library staff and board have completed a review of materials recently, and it's the responsibility and purview of the advisory board to conduct those, um, I guess, um, exercises and ensure um, accessibility is appropriate by age. And, and it's my understanding that that is either underway or has been done recently. To answer your question in two parts. Okay. Uh, state law is very clear. The, the uh, authorizing statute that allows municipalities in the state of Alabama to create a public library requires that the council who creates a public library vest management of the collection to the library board. And we exercise that uh, in our public library, both through the library advisory board, which this council appoints, and through library staff who are staff members of the city of Auburn. And yes, there is a review of uh, materials. Um, specifically, I'm aware of materials that have been specifically requested to be reviewed uh, through the library management policy that is available on the public library's website. And yes, those materials, when they are submitted, are reviewed. Decisions are made. And those uh, decisions are reported in memoranda by the board in fact, at the library board meeting earlier today, I believe there was one of those memoranda approved by the board after review of uh, particularized materials. Thank you. I, will, I will, would like to ask a question too. And I think um, when you were talking, you were saying that these are, uh, I guess, laws by the state, our state legislators. So with that being said, um, I was just wondering, um, Maybe instead of, I guess, the library, the Auburn Library Board and the city of Auburn, I think it may need to go back through our state legislators if laws and stuff, if it involved laws, maybe um, the state leg legislator, <sighs> I, I, I'm, should have some type of input or changes to be made in the law is what I'm, I guess. Because at this point, I don't think the city council has the authority to make any changes. It would have to go back through our state legislator, I'm assuming, from what you were just saying. Yep. So there, there's actually several layers of laws that apply to materials within any public library. There is a federal level, particularly the First Amendment, once material is within the collection, it is protected as free speech. And the removal of materials from the library is adjudicated uh, within uh, several reported cases on a very stringent basis under uh, First Amendment protection reviews. Um, and there's lots of different layers to that First Amendment protection that applies to what is essentially speech through the public library. Something that is not protected under the First Amendment is anything considered to be obscene material. Uh, and obscene material is very specifically defined within Alabama statute. Child pornography is very uh, specifically defined 
within Alabama statute. And those two types of material do not enjoy the same level of First Amendment protection that other materials have. Uh, and so there is a lot of layer uh, within the review of any particular material that is available through a public library system. Again, this council in creating uh, the public library vested the board uh, with the, uh, the authority. It, in fact, the code says all authority to manage the collection. And so, again, that happens in our particular public library through a mix of the library advisory board and uh, city of employee, city employees who serve in our public library. Okay, Connie? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any other questions for Mr. Clark? Is there any review of the advisory board's uh, decisions is there any uh, review ability there at all per our per our city code so the not per our city code or the policies within the public library uh, nor within the enabling statute that allows municipality to create a library board the power that this council has is the power of appointment uh, the power to appoint the library board members and there is a library board appointment coming before this uh, council I believe in uh, April uh, it also has the power of uh, the purse uh, to appropriate monies to be used within the library board. But then once those monies are appropriated, again, by statute, all authority and control are vested within the library board. Thank you. Mr. Clark, that was a, that was a good summary on, on what constitutes obscene <coughs> material. You made the statement that these, these materials do not exist in our library. Um, that uh, it, based on what kind of a review did you make that statement? Based on what I know of the library board's policy and the ability of individual members to uh, have those materials reviewed by our staff. Um, again, I'm telling you as the city attorney, my understanding of the materials and collection within our public library. Has there been a, a, a situation where a book has been reviewed and, and removed or, or placed in a different location? My understanding is that since this process of review has started on books particularly challenged within the last uh, 60 days, uh, that there has been some recollection of the materials. That is, they have been moved up into higher classification of collection. Okay. Thank you. I'm to presume, though, the, the actions taken by the library don't satisfy a number of people in this community, that they feel that the library hasn't been responsive? I, I'm not aware of any particular uh, citizen um, complaining that the review process has not been enacted properly as per policy. Mr. Clark, as far as the library cards, can a can a child take a parent's card and and pull pull books out from the library and come and check those out? Is that is that available to a child without a parent being there? My understanding of the library policies on uh, the issuance of cards is that the uh, an adult member of the city of the city of Auburn, adult citizen of the city of Auburn, can obtain a library card and then request library cards be issued to minor children. And that's where the parental controls are available in my understanding on those cards. Uh, there is a process of self-checkout that our library allows. Parents can choose to have that removed from their child's card. Uh, it is also my understanding that uh, certain collections can be restricted from cards of minor children and that those, uh, those policies and procedures have been in place for some period of time. Any other questions or comments from the council? Thank you, Mr. Clark, for your time. All right, anything else from the council? There's been a request from Mr. Mormon and, and Chief Dawson for 
an evaluation process is the way I'm describing it. I, I believe I've heard what you guys have said. City manager returns back Friday and would be back at work on Monday if y'all would allow time to get her, to allow her to come back. And we, we will get with her and Mr. Clark and see what we can come up with and communicate that to y'all. Okay? All right. So move to adjourn. So move. We're adjourned.